Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at five tips that you can use for your platformer games to make them feel better and make it feel more interesting for your players, as well as some code examples of how to implement them in your own games. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and start looking at what we can do to make our platformers feel better. So, first up on our list here is controllable jumps. So, at the moment, if I just go ahead and play here, I've got a very simple platformer project set up and if I jump no matter how high, how long I press the button down I hold it for ages or if I just tap it he always jumps the same height and for your players that doesn't feel great because sometimes you want to do a tiny little jump and it really feels good to be able to do that so what we're going to do is very very simply to be able to control our character's jump all we have to do is make it so that when the character releases the button that makes them jump we just stop the player going up as fast. It's very, very simple. So I'm gonna jump into my player controller script over here and here I have the code that controls the jumping. So when I press the jump button down, if we're on the ground, then I apply some velocity upwards. And right below that, I'm gonna write if input.getButton up. So when we release the button and when we release the jump button, we also want to make sure that we're currently traveling upwards because obviously if you're going upwards that's when you want to slow your jump down if we're already moving downwards then we've already let go of or we're already finished our jump we can't make it jump any smaller at that point so here we're just going to say the rigid body dot velocity the rb is just a reference i have to the rigid body 2d up here so the rb dot velocity dot y as long as that is greater than zero, so that means we're moving upwards. If we're moving upwards and we release the button, then make an adjustment to the rigid body velocity. So we're gonna say the rigid body dot velocity equals a new vector two. We won't make any changes to the X axis, but on the Y axis, we'll say take the current velocity of the Y axis, the rigid body dot velocity dot Y, and multiply it by 0.5 so we're basically just saying hey go up at half the speed you're currently going up at so if I save this jump back into unity let it compile and you'll see with just a couple of lines of code we now have the ability to if I tap it we'll do a little jump you can see beside the ground here but if I hold it I do a big massive jump so very very simple very easy to do and really great for improving how the game feels to your players Number two on our list is adding hang time, or some people refer to it as coyote time. Basically, a little bit of time after you walk off the edge of something where you're able to jump, because there's nothing more frustrating than walking over the edge in a platformer and thinking, oh, I pressed the jump button, but it didn't count for some reason. So technically, you'll be in the air when you want to jump, but you want your players to be able to go, oh, I pressed the jump slightly too late, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. You want to be extra generous. You always want to be generous to your players so they don't feel that they've missed out on an input. So let's jump into our script and see how we can easily handle that. So I'll again open my player controller script. At the top up here, I'm going to add a couple of variables in. I'm going to add a public float for hang time. And this is how long we're going to allow the player to continue to press the jump button after we've left the ground, after we've walked over the edge of something. Then we're going to add a private float that we'll use to keep track of it that we'll call hang counter. So then down here, before we actually jump up in the air, we're going to add in a little check here. So we're going to check if we are on the ground. So I already have here, we're setting an is grounded variable using some physics checks. So we're, we can already know if we're on the ground. So I'm going to say, hey, if I'm on the ground, then set my hang counter to be equal to the length of time we want our hang time to have. And if I'm not on the ground, that means I've walked over the edge. So make the hang counter count downwards. So hang counter minus equals time dot delta time. So then when we want to jump, instead of checking to see if we're on the ground, what we do is check if I just delete this, we'll say, hey, if we press the jump button and the hang counter is greater than zero. At zero F, like so. And I'm actually just gonna go up here. I'm gonna set a default time for the hang time to be, let's say 0.2 F. So you have 0.2 of a second after you've walked over the edge will allow you to do an extra little jump. 
So let's go back into the game then and see that in action. As you can see, very, very simple to do, but it really helps feel make the game feel a lot better if you're a player. It's something invisible. The player won't really notice it, but you'll really notice it if it's not there. So it's something that's included by default with most platformers. It's not something people mention the whole time, but it's just a way to make the game feel a bit better. So now if I run over the edge here, you can see, oh, there was a whole extra bit of time here. Obviously you can tweak this if you don't like, like if you think that's too long of a time, you can always shorten it down if you want to. But I find 0.2 of a second is actually pretty good to to be generous to your players and allow them to, have, to save any missed jumps that can happen when you walk over the edge. So there you go, a little bit of hang time or coyote time. Number three on our list is sort of the opposite of hang time, which is allowing you to press the jump button a little bit before the character hits the ground. So there's not more frustrating than if you're running along to your game and you jump and you go to press the jump button again and you're like, oh no, I pressed the jump ever so slightly too early. So right here, I'm pressing jump just before I land. That should really register as, a, as an extra jump that the player wants to press when they touch the ground. So what we'll do is add a tiny bit of time that if the player presses the jump button before they touch the ground, it'll actually be registered as a jump. So let's stop this running, go back into our script again. I'll open my player controller script here. We're gonna obviously need a couple of variables for this. So let's go back up to the top and below where we have the hang time variables, I'm gonna add a public float for, let's call this the jump buffer length. So this is the jump buffer is gonna, what we're gonna to use to say, hey, we're jumping for, we're, or we press the jump button right before we hit the ground. So jump buffer length is gonna be how long we want it to last. Then a private float for jump buffer count will be how long it lasts or how we keep track of that number as we go. So what we'll do for this is if we scroll down here below where we did our hang time stuff here, I'm actually just gonna write a little comment in here to manage hang time. And then down here, we're gonna manage the jump buffer. And then here we're going to say, if the player presses the jump button down, so if input dot get button down jump. So if the player presses the jump button, oh, I put my brackets all over the place there. There we go. If we player presses the jump button, then set the jump buffer counter to be equal to jump buffer length. So let's say we set this to be, uh, we're gonna set this to be equal to 0.1 of a second. So then we're setting the, our counter to be 0.1. I just realized there's only one F in jump buffer count. There we go. We set that to be 0.1. And then down below that, we're gonna say, basically if we haven't pressed the jump button down, then we're gonna say else, we'll make it count down. So jump buff counter minus equals time dot delta time. So we're making it count down as we go. Okay, so with the counter now counting down, obviously what we need to do down here is when we want to jump in the air, instead of detecting that the button has been pressed, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna delete all that. We're just gonna use the buffer to keep track of this. So now we're here, we're gonna say, if our jump buffer counter is greater than or equal to zero, we'll say if it's, it, it can be exactly zero as well. That's that's okay. We'll be, we'll be extra generous. We always wanna make sure we're kind of erring on the side of caution. So then below here, we're basically saying, hey, if our jump buffer is a, has a value, then we're allowing a jump. And we're also saying if our hang counter has a value. So we're no longer checking here to see if we press the button and we're not checking to see if we're on the ground. We're now keeping track of two counters and this is what controls our jumping. So then down below here, we need to also make sure that we say our jump buff counter should now be equal to zero because obviously we don't want uh, our jumps to continually happen over and over again. We want to make sure, hey, if we register the jump, then set our buffer down to zero so that we don't continue jumping up in the air. So save this, jump back into Unity, let that compile. And now if I go in here, I can jump. And just before I hit the ground, I can hit there. Uh, so it'll actually be a little, I'll just be a little bit more generous just for uh, the purposes of showing this off. So let's say we have half a second. If I jump and there we go. If I 
press jump a long time before I hit the ground. I do an extra sort of bounce as we go. There we go, so we get a nice big jump. But also if I'm just on the ground, we do a nice jump up in the air. And we still have controllable jumps, and we still have our coyote time walking over the edge like that. So perfect. We can now jump late and jump early in our game and basically give our player more control over what's going on. Number four on our list is moving the camera ahead of the player. When you're playing a platformer game like this, if I'm moving to the right here, I have the camera focusing on the player in the middle. The cam it has a very simple script on the camera that just has a target, which is the player, and moves with the player on the x-axis. But we don't want the player to be right in the middle. If you're in a platformer game like this, moving to the right, you want to see what's ahead of the player on the right. And equally, if you want your player to move back to the left, you want the camera to show what's ahead of the player to the left. And we can do this very, very simply. There's lots of information out there about customizing your cameras and putting extra work into your camera is something that is really, really worthwhile to do. And to be honest, could be a whole series of videos. But we're going to do a very simple trick to make the game immediately feel a lot better. So I'm going to stop this running. I'm going to go into my player script. And if I drop my player down here, I have a cam target object, which is the child of the player. Uh, if I just zoom in here, it's just an empty object directly in the center of the player. At the moment, we're going to move that forward and make the camera move to here. So, so I'm going to go to the camera up here and I'm going to make sure that the camera target object is the target of the camera script that I have set up here. Again, this is a very simple script, doesn't really do anything fancy, it just follows the player. And then I'm going to go back to my player, go into my player controller, and I'm going to add a few variables up the top up here. I'm going to add a public transform for the camera target because we're going to move that ahead of the player. We're going to add a couple of floats. <coughs> One for how far we want it to move ahead, so ahead amount. And we'll have another one for a head speed, and that's going to be how fast it moves to that position ahead of us. And then all we're going to do is scroll down here, and we'll do it after all this stuff here. Before I do animations and things like that, I'm going to do it in this section here. So this is going to do be what we move the camera point with. So when we want to move the camera point, all we're going to do is check and see, hey, have we? do we have any input going on at the moment? So if input dot get axis raw on the horizontal axis so if we're moving anywhere on the horizontal axis and we're going to say is that is not equal to zero so that means that if there's any input left or right doesn't matter which way we want it to go then what we're going to do in here is say the camera target we're going to move not just the position of it but just the local position so we're going to move it relative to the to the player itself so here we're going to say the camera target dot local position is equal to a new vector tree and on the x-axis we're basically just going to move it forward or backward depending on what our input is so we're going to say that we want it to move to on the x-axis ahead amount which is how far we want it to go ahead multiplied by whatever the current input is so input dot get axis raw horizontal like so and then we're going to make the on the y-axis obviously we don't want to change it so we're going to say cam target dot local position dot y and on the z-axis the same will be camera target dot local position dot z now I'm not using the ahead speed variable just for the moment but we're just going to see what this does and then we're going to come back and make one other little change to make it a little bit nicer so i'm going to go in here save this ahead amount let's say we'll move it ahead uh two say and i'm going to set this ahead speed just to be one for the moment so now when i play oh we haven't got our, our camera target assigned i just realized so camera target into that slot on the player there we go now when i move ahead there we go you can see it does move ahead of the player but it kind of snaps and jumps around. So that obviously doesn't feel great. So we don't really want it to kind of snap into position like that. So instead, what we're going to do is go back into our script. And in here, instead of just moving or setting the X value directly, what we're going to do is make it lerp to that position. So we'll say matf.lerp. So we need to know where we start at and where we start at. Start at is the camera target 
dot local position dot x where we want to go to is the ahead amount multiplied by the input that we press and how fast we want it to get there is the ahead speed multiplied by time dot delta time uh, and then we'll close that bracket save this back into unity let it compile and once it's done here we go we can play and now when we move ahead you can see the camera moves ahead of the player like so so now we have we can see a little bit more ahead of what we're doing and when we turn back the other way the camera now switches back to the other way so let's make this move a little bit faster because that switch is not very much and we'll move it ahead a good bit more you can obviously play around with these values and see what works nicely for you so now I can make it move a good bit ahead of the player. There we go. We have loads of area that we can see any dangers coming up ahead of the player. And when we switch back the other way, we can now switch and see the dangers coming in whatever direction the player is facing. Okay, so the fifth and final platformer tip is to add some dust into your world. Basically, impact little dust effects when your player is moving around. So I've got two particle systems set up, very, very simple. We've got a footsteps effect. So if I turn it on here, if we zoom in and just play it, you can see it creates this little effect of dust, nothing too fancy. One really important thing to note with it is that you need to make sure that the, where are we? The simulation space is world and not local. So it'll be local by default, but if it's local, as we move it around, you can see all the particles kind of stay relative to each other. But if we switch it to world, as we move it around, you can see it creates the particles and leaves them in the right position in the world. So with that done, we've got that in place. Let's set it up so that this will work with the player. So I'm going to have it turned on here by default. Um, one other thing to note is in my emission here, we have a rate over time of 35. That's how fast our particles are appearing. So obviously if I press play here now, there we go, we get nice little dust particle effects as we're moving around. I'm actually just going to, just to make things a little bit more simple, uh, I had quite high values here, I just realised for our camera, I'm going to make that a little bit more straightforward. So when I move around, there we go, you can see our little dust trail behind us, but also the dust gets left behind as we jump up in the air, so we don't really want that. So let's jump into our script to fix that. So I'm going to stop this running, jump into our player controller script, and up the top up here, we're going to create a couple of variables for our particle effects. So I'm going to create a public particle system that we'll call, we'll call this the footsteps. And then to be able to make changes to how fast those little, um, the, uh, the rate over time is happening. So the, how fast the particles are being generated, we'll have another private variable called particle system dot emission module and we'll call this foot emission and the reason we do this is because we can't make this a public public variable that we can assign but what we can do is make this a public variable that we can assign that particle system to it and then in our start function here say the foot emission will be equal to our footsteps particle system that we create and within that we'll access the emission variables so just to demonstrate that, I'll just save this. I'll go back into Unity here. And if we go to our player, let's assign the footsteps particle effect there like so. So then when I press play, what it does is it'll access this footsteps effect and it'll go in here and it'll go to emission. And I, if I go to debug view here, yeah, it, it doesn't show up as a variable, the uh, particle system that emission module because it's just not something that can be represented like that in Unity. So that's why we have to uh, assign it to the parent kind of object and then access the emission within it. But now that we have access to that, if we go down here and below where we're moving our camera point, let's do our particle effects stuff in here. I'm going to say, this is what, how we're going to show the footstep effect. And we're going to then say, if our input dot get access raw horizontal is not equal to zero so if basically if we're pressing any input and we are on the ground 
We're just going to use the, the fact that we're on the ground. We're not going to use our jump buffer or anything like that because we're not trying to wait for a jump here. We're just going to say, as long as we're on the ground and our, we're pressing some input, then we're going to make sure that the uh, foot emission dot rate over time is 35. So that was the value I had set in the editor. Otherwise, so if we're not pressing any input and we're, or we're not on the ground, if any of those things are not true, then we're going to say foot emission dot rate over time equals zero. So basically this will stop spawning things if we're not pressing any input or if we're not on the ground, but otherwise it'll allow us to have our particles shown. So save this, jump back in here, let it play. And now when we walk, there we go. We've got particles appearing, but if I stop, no particles. And if I jump in the air, no particles. So that's perfect. That's one little impact effect that looks really nice. But the other one that's really important to add as well is when we jump and hit the ground, we want a little puff of dust to pop out. So I've got another particle effect here called the impact effect. Let's turn this on. And if I play this, I'm gonna turn on, uh, we'll leave on Newton for a moment. Press play, you can see all it does is create a nice little puff little cloud of particles in the air. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to stop this looping first of all, and what we're going to basically make happen is uh, that this will move to wherever the player is when we hit the ground. Now at the moment the way it's set up is over here under stop action, it's important to note that we have disable marked, and basically what this means is once it finishes playing through its duration, which is two seconds long, it'll go to our stop action and it'll say disable, so after two seconds it'll basically deactivate itself, like so. So what we're going to do is reactivate it at a new position whenever the player hits the ground. So let's go into our scripts and let's set that up. So first thing obviously we're going to need is back up the top here, a reference to that impact effect. So let's go here and say public particle system impact effect, like so. <coughs> And how do we know whether we're on the ground any particular time? Or how do we know that we've just hit the ground? Well, we're going to create a private bool that will tell us whether we were on the ground in the previous frame. So we're going to say was on ground, like so. So then down the bottom, down here, underneath where we're showing our footstep effects, we're going to manage here showing the impact effect, like so. And we're going to do an if statement here in a second, but before we do that, we're just going to say here, was on ground equals is grounded. So we're just saying, hey, at the end of this frame, update it so that whether we're on the ground is using the current stored value. So then let's imagine, let's imagine we're in the air on one frame. So was on ground is false because we're not on the ground here. So it gets set to be false. Then on the next frame, the player hits the ground. So then it does the is grounded check and says, oh, we're on the ground now. So then down here, we can do some code here where is grounded is true and was on ground is false. So here we're going to say if was on ground is false and is grounded is true. So that means we were in the air in the previous frame. We're on the ground now. So that means, hey, we just hit the ground. So let's do an impact effect. So then in here we have our impact effect. First thing we're going to do is activate the object. So game object dot set active true to make sure that it gets reactivated in our scene. Then to make sure that just in case the object was already active, that we're not just uh, resetting it uh, or we're not just making it continue to be active in the world because then the two seconds would count down and it would just deactivate and we would get no cloud at all. What we're going to do here is say impact effect dot stop. So that stops uh, the impact from playing. We're going to move the impact effect to wherever our player is. So impact effect dot transform dot position. Oh no, trails dot transform dot position. Where do we want to move it to? Well, we don't want it to just move to the player. What we'll do is move it to where the footstep effect is. 
So we already have the footsteps particle system effect. So let's move it to where that is because we know that is at the player's feet. So we're going to say impact effect that transform dot position equals footsteps dot transform dot position. Why does that keep auto? I don't know why that keeps auto completing trails. But anyway, footsteps that transform dot position, and then we'll say impact effect dot play. So it'll start the effect playing again. Okay, save this. Jump back into Unity, let it compile, and now once we play, oh, I just realized we didn't assign the impact effect in here. There we go. So we can hit play, and there we go. You can see the player hit the ground, and we got a nice little cloud of little impacts happening as we go. So very, very simple to do as well. You can see we've got a whole bunch of extra techniques now. To make the game feel a lot better for your players, even though all we've done is 20 minutes of work and made very, very simple changes to the game. Now, as I said, these changes are very simple, but they have a lot of impact on the player and really helps make your platformer games feel a lot interesting. So there you go. Thanks for watching this video. I will be back soon with more tutorial goodness very soon. Coming up this weekend, if you haven't already, is the Games Plus Jam Tree game jam our community game jam which is going to be a whole load of fun i can't wait to do this and we're going to make some really cool games in one weekend so make sure you sign up for that at the link in the description down below i will be back soon with more tutorial goodness as i said and in the meantime keep being awesome